number five, we have the Voronoi diagram. Below shows three identical cellular phone towers, T1, T2, T3. A fourth cellular phone tower, T4, is located in the shaded region. So somewhere here, there is a T4 going around. The dashed lines in the diagram below represent the edges in the Voronoi diagram, and they tell us a little bit about the scales of my thing. All right, cool. So Tim stands inside the shaded region. Explain why Tim will receive the strongest signal from tower T4. So let's explain a little bit Voronoi diagrams. See, so a Voronoi diagram is like, I'm going to make one on the side, actually. See, so let's say that this is the limits of my diagram. And I just put a bunch of dots. See, so in a relatively random way, I put a bunch of dots. And now what the Voronoi diagram does is that it sort of like shades a region around each of these dots. And that does something, ¿cierto? Now what it does, and this is of course not drawn like professionally or anything. Let me put another dot here. And so what this does is that all these other dots that are sort of like invisible in a way, but all this white space, ¿cierto? Its closest red dot is whatever region it's in, ¿cierto? And so for example, if you take that guy there, what is its closest red dot? It's this one. If you take that guy there, what is its closest red dot? It's this one. And so you keep doing that until you end up with an area, ¿cierto? There's a dot here whose closest is that, and here whose closest is that, and that is sort of like how the Voronoi diagram gets formed, see? That is the intuition of the Voronoi diagram. So if Tim is inside the shaded region, well, Oh, and the tower T4 is somewhere in here. Well, Tim will receive the strongest signal from the tower T4. Because no matter where he stands in the shaded region, whether it's here or there or there, wherever T4 is, Tim will be closest to T4 no matter what. Because in the shaded region, all of these dots, regardless of where they are, are closest to T4 anyway. So that is the answer for part A. That is like literally how you write it. See? So you get part A, bada bim, bada boom. For part B, they tell us tower T2 has coordinates, negative 9,5. Let me write that real quick. Negative 9,5 is right there. Um, and the edge connecting vertices A and B has equation Y equals 3. So, equation Y equals 3. If you take an, an axis, ¿cierto? Or a coordinate plane or whatever, Y equals 3 is here. If I take X equals 2, X equals 2 is here. Okay? That is what they mean by Y equals 3 and X equals 2. Is that it? If I say y equals negative 4, where would that be? y equals negative 4 would be down here. Is that it? All right, that is the intuition of the equals 3. See? So what information does that give me? Well, it gives me the information that this line here, ¿cierto? Is y equals 3. That means that the point A is x comma 3, and the point B is x comma 3, ¿cierto? So it's some x, and it has a 3 inside of it. And that means that this T1 also has a 3 inside of it. Ooh la la. They actually give us the coordinates of T, T1 down the road. And it's pretty evident, like, yep, it's at 3. See? So T1, might as well write it down now. It's negative 13, 3. All right. We need to write down the coordinates of T4. Now, anytime that the IB, like, gives you information, you usually have to use it. ¿Cierto? Like, they don't trick you with that kind of stuff. So... We have to use the fact that T2 is at negative 9,5. We have to use the fact that here there is a distance of 2. ¿Cierto? There is a distance of 2 because T2 is at y equals 5. And so this, this difference here is 2, which is the same 2 that I drew there. Hmm, interesting. Okay. And so... T4 has to be like at an equal distance from here to there. So I know that T4 is actually at, or we know for a fact, that it's got a Y value of 1. It's got a Y value of 1 because this 3 here, I'm doing minus 2 again. And so T4 has to be somewhere in this height. ¿cierto? All right. We know that T1 is at 13 and T2 is at negative 9. ¿cierto? Now, because these are all like equal distances to each other, the distance from T1 to T2 from the X standpoint 
is 4 units. ¿cierto? That means that T4 is also 4 units away from T1. So it's negative 13 plus 4, negative 9. Okay? The thing about Voronoi diagrams is that they're, all these points are like, it's very like mirrored or like symmetrical, the distance between one or the other. So in respect to the mirror, that's why I could use this trick here and also this trick here for the x value. That is, so T4 is actually what I just did there. Negative 9, comma 1. All right, they give us the, uh, that's part B, see? They give us the information that tower T1 has the coordinates, blah, blah, blah. I need to find the gradient of the edge of the Voronoi diagram between towers T1 and T2. What the hell is gradient? Gradient is the same as slope, which is the same as the symbol M, which is the same as the thing in my trusty, rusty formal booklet, that y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. See, this is in your formal booklet. It is right there. Look at it. This is a tool that you can use always. So I need to plug in this information. ¿cierto? Now it's, it's asking for the one between t1 and t2. ¿cierto? So what was my points for t1? Well, I figured out that it was, or they tell us, sorry, that it's negative 13, 3. And the one of t2 was negative 9, 5. So here, all you can really like mess up on here is being disorganized. Frankly, I'm just being honest. ¿cierto? Um, the x1, x2 makes a reference to a set of points. ¿cierto? So a set of points has like x1 goes with y1, x2 goes with y2. So what goes with y7, x7? ¿cierto? And no, this is not y to the power of 7. That is a different story. It is y sub 7, which is like the set of points number 7. See? Okay, so just be organized. What is x1? What is y1? Blah, blah, blah. Take a moment. Write down your set of points. Write on top which one each is. Don't get lost. This is your compass. Once you do that, plug in. ¿cierto? y2, we said was 5, minus y1, which is 3. Plug in with parentheses. Plug in with parentheses because that way you avoid um, double negative multiplications and issues like that, ¿cierto? which is about to happen actually. x2 is negative 9 minus x1, which is negative 13. If you always plug in with parentheses, it's going to be very apparent when you have a double negative multiplication. See? So on top we have 5 minus 3. On the bottom we have negative 9 plus 13 because of the double negative. This ends up being 2 divided by. Ba -ba -ba. Four. That took me a little bit harder. <laughs> I really thought about that one for a while. So the gradient is, well, it's one half. See? The thing about the grade, this is the gradient between the point T1 and T2. ¿cierto? Because it's a Voronoi diagram and they're asking for the edge, for the gradient of the edge of the Voronoi diagram, we need to take a moment and actually do the reciprocal, the negative reciprocal of this guy here. ¿cierto? And so the reciprocal would be just flipping it, so it's 2, and the negative reciprocal would be multiplying it by negative 1, which is negative 2. See? I don't like part C because it's, it's kind of hard to explain, and I'd rather just tell you, like, memorize that the edge of a Voronoi diagram, ¿cierto? its gradient is going to be the negative reciprocal of whatever points they're asking for. I know it's awfully specific, the intuition of the Voronoi diagram, I'd have to like get really deep into it. This is one of the few things that I'd say, dude, just memorize it. See? So you get the gradient, then you do the negative reciprocal, which is that. ¿cierto? You flip it, you multiply it by a negative, and you move on with life. 